Good afternoon and welcome to yet another edition of Green is Gold, a live uh, broadcast brought to you by Zim Papers Television Network, ZTN, in partnership with Hevos. I'm Blessing Monazi. Now, today's show is the fourth in a series of ongoing discussions on renewable energy in line with Hevos's uh, Green and Inclusive Energy GIE program. The GIE program aims to address the energy poverty situation in Southern Africa and also increase clean energy access to vulnerable and marginalized groups. Now, this afternoon, we will demystify the concept of net metering, its benefits, best practices, implications, and also access, uh, also assess uh, rather how well prepared we are as a nation uh, to embrace this route of embedded generation. Now, to answer these and other questions, I'm joined in studio by Zimbabwe's Minister of Energy and Power Development, Advocate uh, Fortune Chassi, uh, Honorable Minister. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Also in studio with me this afternoon, uh, Tawanda Muzamwese, Chief Sustainability Consultant with the Toxic Consul Consultancy. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good to have you back on the show. Thank you very much for having me on the program. Now, feel free to engage us uh, during the course of the show uh, through our social media handles, our Facebook page, as in Papers TV Network. On Twitter, it's at ZTN News. Now, Minister Chassi, uh, to get the ball rolling, can you give us the long-term plans for Zimbabwe as far as renewable energy sector is concerned and also our progress towards net metering? Well, thank you very much uh, for organizing this particular program. Um, renewable energies are the new kid on the block in the country at the moment. Um, we've taken a bit of time to focus on this particular area and uh, my ministry uh, is now determined to make uh, and have incremental developments in this area. We, as you know, now have a renewable energy policy. It's one of the critical building blocks uh, for, for us in this area. We're also working on a, um, a, a policy that speaks to the various energy sources that we have got in the, in the country, an integrated resource plan, which we have not had in the past. Now, as you know, failing uh, to plan is planning to fail. Uh, we've already been uh, hard hit by the hydrological developments uh, at Kariba Dam. Um, and so it's very important that we must now have a, a, a deliberate, integrated um, approach to the various contributions uh, from the various sources of, uh, of energy. And so our eyes at the moment um, are very much um, focused on solar energy and we are putting together the build building blocks at the moment. We are very happy that uh, um, commercial entities, some of the big um, consumers of power, uh, are now very much uh, appetized for solar. You, you have the Schweppes of this world who have spent over a million uh, dollars coming up with their uh, maybe just over a megawatt. Uh, Econet um, um, has done that and we're encouraging um, other companies to go that way. Mining entities who are um, uh, guzzlers of power have come to the table and a number have been have applied for licenses. I think five or so were licensed in the last week. And we'd like to grow this business. We would also like to um, move very quickly in the area of rooftop um, solar. And we, we think that we can develop a fairly big virtual power station if we're able to harness the excess power that uh, the, the um, investors, whether domestic or commercial, have put into their own capacity to produce power. Government's approach in this respect is really to say that, um, is really to say power to the people, so that we are moving um, significantly from the old model where the public, commercial or domestic, were simply consumers of power. We now call them consumers of power. Mm -hmm. Want them to consume what Zesa produces, uh, but we also want to give them an opportunity to see the generation of power domestically mm -hmm. at uh, one's household or in the industry uh, to produce power and see it as 
uh, a business which can be adjunct to either the uh, domestic consumption or the commercial business that a particular company is doing. Mm -hmm. And we would like to have a, a, a technology platform where people um, notify ZESA and the regulatory authority that they have installed power and what the capacity is. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they know what the excess is, roughly, we would like to know that so that we aggregate all these figures. Mm -hmm and um, uh, enable trade in power. So that, that is really our long shot, mm -hmm. what we're expecting to be doing. So we can leapfrog because we have uh, many other countries that have done this, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Professor, thank you for that uh, detailed update. Uh, now, Tawanda, um, the concept of net metering might be new to so many people. Um, can you highlight or tell us the benefits of uh, such a uh, you know concept for an emerging country like Zimbabwe and more specifically to help people understand what it is all about. Thank you very much uh, Blessing. Um, I think the Minister has given us um, adequate foundation in terms of the direction which the country is taking towards um, involving more players in the generation uh, of energy. Uh, most of us uh, are used to see power utilities uh, playing a big role in the generation of energy and it is good that the government is leading us uh, forward in a situation where we are diversifying you know the energy sources so as the minister highlighted renewable energy is really the way to go in the 21st century and especially in the 2020s we are now in 2020 as we are moving forward and uh, net metering uh, is a mechanism which allows participation which allows inclusion um, I will talk about net metering in terms of uh, the concept of how it is done for the benefit of our viewers who are tuning in because information is power. Mm -hmm. When uh, our companies uh, are informed, when our households are informed, they can then also make the applications. We have heard that about five uh, institutions have actually recently been uh, approved uh, in the past uh, week. So net metering is a situation which uh, augments uh, producers of electricity with our grid. We know that uh, Zimbabwe, just like any other uh, developing country, is aiming to help us to end energy poverty. Uh, and energy poverty is an issue which is across the world. There is no country in the world which achieved the highest level of socioeconomic development without uh, providing access to energy. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Ministry of Energy and Power Development is doing. And according to the United uh, Nations Sustainable Development Goal number seven, it aims at you know, providing clean and affordable uh, energy. So this is a process whereby we are augmenting uh, producers of renewable energy in particular to our own grid. Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, uh, there has to be connectivity, there has to be approval, but also there has to be what you call a bi-directional meter. Uh, most of our consumers are used to their meters, which just track their own consumption. But when we now talk of uh, net metering, there is need for installation of a bi-directional meter, and a bi-directional electricity meter is able to move current in both directions, mm -hmm. which means that if you generate your renewable energy, and if there is excess, maybe mm -hmm. from your solar system, if you are generating uh, during the day, uh, and then you've got excess, you are using, you've got excess, you can then be able to give back into the grid. Mm -hmm. We have heard about the issue of uh, the virtual power station, mm -hmm. which the Honorable Minister um, has spoken about. It is high time that all Zimbabweans shift their mentality uh, to, to say that for us to solve our energy uh, issues, we need, of course, the power stations which we already have and also for them to perform at full capacity. But we need to think about the concept of the virtual power station, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. may not really be, be visible. So you are able to export your excess uh, power that you generate from your system, but maybe at periods that you don't generate enough uh, during the night, you can then be able to get your power uh, from the grid. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of a specific period, let's say a month or let's say a year, uh, depending on a particular period that is governed by the regulator, we are then able to see that um, 
you can actually accumulate uh, credits. It could actually mean that you have given to the power utility uh, more or you may actually have to pay. And when you've got net metering, it would actually also reduce your, 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 your energy bill. So this is the concept of net metering, which helps us to augment these particular uh, systems. Now, the benefits of net metering, they are multi-pronged. Mm -hmm. But because of time, we will focus uh, on a few of them. I think uh, we'll, let's just focus on four. Uh, the first uh, benefit of uh, net metering uh, is that it can actually alleviate the pressure on the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we want to do is to reduce the pressure on the grid so that we can feed more onto, what? onto the grid in terms of our generating capacity. So if you've got more uh, producers who are also consumers, just like the Honorable Minister has highlighted prosumers, it also means that uh, the demand and the strain on the grid is actually reduced. But secondly, we want to talk about the issue of the socio-economic development of this country and also the ability to raise income by companies mm -hmm. and individuals. Um, many organizations and many individuals, they are paying for more energy than they actually are supposed to be paying for because you know they are not uh, efficient in their processes and this is what we want to encourage industry to do so net metering can actually reduce your energy bill mm -hmm. uh, which means that you can be able to save money mm -hmm. you can see a company saving about fifty thousand mm -hmm. thirdly we well, just just hold on that one. maybe we can continue just up this, after this short breather i'll give you a chance to uh, give us more on the benefits uh, the program is green as gold uh, proudly brought to you by zetian in partnership with the uh, hevos uh, today we're looking at the concept of net metering opportunities for zimbabwe to scale up its renewable energy effort uh, don't go away with we'll take a short breather we'll be right back <laughs> Welcome back. The program is Green as Gold, proudly brought to you by ZTN in partnership with Hevos. We're looking at uh, the concept of net metering. Now, Tawanda, before I interrupted you there, you were giving us some of the benefits of net metering. Yes, blessing. Um, I think uh, before we, we went for the break, I spoke about the need for us to relieve our grid by you know, introducing other players and making sure that households can also do that, industries can also do that, Institutions can also be able to, to do that, uh, which means that as a country, we can move towards energy security. Uh, we can move towards energy security without necessarily building many power stations, but by also creating other institutions where we are generating. And I also highlighted uh, the issue of saving money. The bottom line is very, very important. Uh, when businesses invest in their processes, they expect a return on investment. Mm -hmm. You will be shocked that many uh, companies uh, in a particular year, they pay a very significant amount of money on energy. Mm -hmm. Energy is a big cost driver. You will see that the prices of certain goods may be expensive because of the power that is actually put in the production. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just to then add on, um, when we have net metering, bringing in renewable energy onto our grid. We are also greening the economy. We are also moving towards clean energy sources. The trend worldwide is moving towards cleaner fuels because of climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, climate change, yes, right now the world is fighting COVID-19 uh, pandemic at a global level, which uh, has got everyone's focus. 
But let's not forget that we've got one of the biggest challenges that the world is facing, that is a climate change. You know, the minister earlier on alluded to the fact that the changes in the hydrological cycle affects our generation capacity. You want to know that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is the highest body in terms of uh, climate change in the world, uh, has predicted that by 2030, global temperatures will rise uh, by two degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. resulting in droughts, erratic rainfall, a rise in health uh, conditions and diseases. Mm -hmm. So when we move towards net metering, bringing in a higher share of renewable energy, we are also fighting climate change. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Honorable Minister, um, you did highlight that we did have uh, mining uh, companies coming on board uh, being licensed. Um, what is the general movement in terms of licensing? Because some experts uh, feel that maybe the the licensing requirements are a bit stringent. Uh, what are some of the incentives that are there to bring in more players? Well, I think the we already have um, uh, regulations which I think were issued in 2015 or so on net metering. Uh, I've evaluated those... Uh, uh, yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I've evaluated that statutory instrument and where we are now would like to incentivize uh, investment in this area. Now, one of the things that uh, the statutory instrument says is that if you if you park your excess power in the ZESA grid, mm -hmm. when you recover it, you lose 20 percent. That's power banking. Yes, mm -hmm. and our view as government is we are at an inception stage where we need to be encouraging um, investment in this particular area. Mm -hmm. We would like a situation which enables individuals and companies to um, recoup the expense they have incurred in coming up with solar. Mm -hmm. Now our view at this point in time is that when somebody uh, comes up with a power that is based, that is renewable, they are really helping us as government and CESA mm -hmm. uh, from an import substitution point of view. Mm -hmm. They are lessening our um, uh, our needs for importation of power. Mm. And so if you take it from that point of view, uh, we strongly feel that it will be beneficial to this sector if one is compensated um, in US dollar terms. In other words, a company puts up two um, megawatts and they have an excess and instead of paying a, an outsider um, producer of power, we should be able to compensate a local person mm -hmm. in, in, in US dollar terms because we're going to pay anyway outside mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. And um, the power we import is significantly expensive. And so with somebody generating power locally, we will be able to meet the bill um, possibly at a much lesser rate, but the US dollar component will make it uh, um, worth the while for the investor. So this is something that we're looking at. The regulations uh, limit themselves to um, payment via units. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are situations where that can help, but um, I also feel that uh, a compensation in US dollar terms uh, will be uh, the thing that is going really to drive um, investors and inv incentivize uh, domestic holdings to to go this way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Tawanda, the Honourable Minister highlights the issue of uh, you know tariffs. Um, how going back to the grid contribution, how is it actually measured, and are there any <coughs> limits uh, to the permitted generation uh, that can be for the different categories, and also. If someone is uh, having excess energy uh, and they're being credited in you know, non-liquid uh, monetary terms, how do they realize their benefit over time? All right, thank you very much uh, for that particular question. Yeah, it is very important for um, our listeners and our viewers to understand that uh, value is not only in, in, in cash. I think it's a mentality that we need to uh, work on mm -hmm. to move away from materialism of you holding uh, cash. Because if you have got those units, it means that you are able to feed them in your manufacturing process, 
and then you can actually have manufacturing value mm -hmm. added. Mm -hmm. The country for a long time has been talking about a value addition and, and beneficiation. You are able to then recoup your, 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 your money uh, through, other, through other means. Uh, for example, um, through improved uh, competitiveness. Let's say you are in the process of manufacturing beverages or you are able to manufacture you know, peanut butter. Mm -hmm. You put your input cost, you put in raw materials, your water, your energy, and then you come up with the final price. We want to look at the margin of the product. So companies who uh, practice net metering may actually have a higher margin. While at least those who do not practice net metering, they will have a very low margin and they will try to justify you know, high prices of their goods. The regulations have been articulated by the minister, but it's also very clear that according to the regulations, there are issues for us to be looking at you know, a 100 uh, kilowatt in terms of uh, the systems. But also it's very important that companies follow uh, regulation. This is why our ministry is there. This is why the Zimbabwe Energy Regulatory Authority is there to also regulate this process. In terms of when we talk of tariffs, we are talking about energy economics. Mm -hmm. The demand for energy is just the same as the demand of other goods and services. Mm -hmm. Government has got a dual role to play. And um, they often find themselves in a situation where they have to weigh and make critical decisions. Number one, the government of Zimbabwe, just like any other government, is there to protect its consumers. We need to protect uh, our people by making sure that uh, you know, reasonable tariffs you know, are charged for the access to energy because we are saying that people need to access energy. The government also has a role to protect the investment of investors mm -hmm. and you know, create a conditions, the conditions which are necessary for return on investment. So a tariff, uh, let's not look at a tariff from the perspective of one side. So as government comes up with these tariffs, uh, they try by all means to balance the needs of the consumers to make sure that consumers are not ripped off of their hard end cash, mm -hmm. considering also the market dynamics in the region and internationally, but also that investors have got a return on investment. We need to also consider that the tariffs are set in due consideration of the, the times of the day, the early times where we've got peak demand, mm -hmm. where everyone wants power. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in the mornings from five o'clock to 10 o'clock, people are bathing, they mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. go to work. So just like in your neoclassical economics, the demand of energy will be high. Mm -hmm. If we do not manage the pricing, then we'll have serious problems. In the evenings, during your prime time, the family time, five o'clock to 10 p.m. as people are doing their entertainment, you will see that again, the load goes up. So we need to have a specific load for the peak period, mm -hmm. specific load for the off-peak periods, but not forgetting industry, which is the major consumer of energy in, in, in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We also mm -hmm. need to, you, to have uh, certain tariffs which are you know, meant for industry and which we then say that in terms of their consumption, then they should not be able to uh, surpass this uh, sort of a uh, consumption. And also from a safety perspective, mm -hmm. so that, you know, uh, our, our grid uh, remains safe. And again, we also do not want a situation where the connection is done without a consideration of power quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your net metering regulations assure us that we get, you know, power mm -hmm. of the proper quality. Mm -hmm. And I think more interaction of our stakeholders with ZESA will give guidelines to say what sort of power quality uh, is required. Because it's not every renewable energy generator mm -hmm. who generates the uh, power of the preferred uh, quality. quality. Yeah. Minister Jassi, um, Tawanda brings in the issue of the utility. I have to ask this. Yes, yes. Is net metering a possible threat to our traditional uh, utility provider mm -hmm. in the medium to long term? Because we, we, we have seen uh, perceptions uh, around this slowing down uptake in countries like Namibia. Yes, um, I, I think you can have individuals who are st uh, stuck in the past, but the reality um, regarding where we are going as a, uh, not only as a country, but continent and the whole world, uh, implies uh, a transformation of uh, the role that uh, organizations like ZESA have traditionally played. Um, as I said, when people, um, 
produce uh, solar power or wind power, they are essentially knowing away from the role of the utility um, in, in several respects. But the key one is that the utility itself must have an interest in the proliferation of uh, um, solar energy, mm -hmm. uh, given that we are obliged to be giving sufficient power to the public. And so when the public comes in and uh, aids us, um, uh, as government, we don't see a, a conflict there. Um, but clearly what it implies is that uh, uh, in the long, long term, we are really transforming the utility from uh, the boss as far as power is concerned and we are empowering, we are taking a bit of their power and giving it to the generality of the public mm -hmm. for them to be able to produce this much needed power. And uh, organizations like ZESA, for example, will have a selfish interest in the development of this sector mm -hmm. because uh, they've got financial challenges they will also have skills challenges and other challenges. And um, when a company uh, talk, for example, of uh, the example of Schweppes that I've used, uses its own million dollars to mm -hmm. generate power, uh, that is complementary to the role that the, um, the utilities uh, play. And I, I think that that message is very easy to understand and it has been understood by the utility. Uh, there is need for complementarity between uh, ZESA, for example, and uh, IPPs. Mm -hmm. uh, both require each other. Uh, one cannot rely solely on solar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You still need the facility of the infrastructure of ZESA. We're talking about the human resource, the technical aspects. Exactly, mm -hmm. all that. So I, th I think really it's something that uh, I am personally determined as a minister to run with. And uh, I'm aware that ZESA itself is very much in interested mm -hmm. uh, in this. They, they've uh, made indications that uh, they would want to develop 500 megawatts. And, and that is good. And they can partner with uh, uh, local or foreign companies to achieve this. It doesn't have to be on their balance sheet. All they have to do is to play a facilitator role to make sure that uh, this happens. Mm -hmm. Yes. The program is Green as Gold, uh, proudly brought to you by ZTN in partnership with uh, Hevos. Today we are talking about net metering and its relevance in uh, Zimbabwe's renewable energy space. Uh, don't go away, we take a short breather, we'll be right back. Life will never be the same again. Absolutely. No. How do you tell someone in Mbaria or uh, in, uh, in Soweto? that uh, they should exercise social distancing. Mm. Every single one of us, barring a few, are praying more. What, what is the, yeah. the health economic cost of what we are trying to achieve? I don't know whether his chairman knows he runs at about <laughs> 9 in the morning. Yeah, I've, I've just got the symptoms, so I just called the doctor and I just, uh, and then he just advised me to have to stay at home, eh? The program is uh, Green as Gold, brought to you by Zim Papers Television Network and Hevos. We, today we're talking net metering and uh, trying to understand uh, this uh, relatively new concept and its opportunities for Zimbabwe's renewable energy space. Now, Tawanda, um, what are the common threats and barriers um, that we can look out for you know, in our quest for net metering? Developed countries uh, did take up this technology as far back as 1984, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, why has it taken so long for developing countries to come on board? Thank you very much. Uh, in order for us to scale up uh, net metering or for us to scale up renewable energy, we are now talking about accelerated implementation because pilots have worked. We now want to scale up and replicate. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to address the challenges and the barriers which exist. And I think uh, one of the first barriers uh, has already been alluded uh, by the Honorable 
minister, which has been the, uh, the perception that in order for us to achieve uh, energy security, we only need uh, power stations. And I think he has already debunked that to say uh, the position of government is to diversify. So that is the perception that has to be dealt with. The other barrier uh, that we see uh, to net metering and also renewable energy sector as a whole is the issue of access to finance, uh, particularly for the independent power producers, uh, particularly for those who also generate uh, renewable energy. But if the government of Zimbabwe, you know, approves you as an IPP, it is your duty for you to be able to set up in a specific uh, period. It is not a government's challenge that you are not accessing. There are people who get licenses for speculative purposes, mm -hmm. and we, we do not like to see that. But in general, financing is an issue, not only in Zimbabwe, but in other countries. So we are then saying we need to talk with multilateral uh, organizations, uh, development finance institutions. We need to talk uh, to our development uh, partners, international organizations. We also need to talk to our local banks. You know, our local banks need to participate more in the renewable energy agenda. It is not, it is of no use, you know, to be giving uh, people, you know, loans for uh, consumption, mm -hmm. for, for someone just to go and uh, pay lobola or other uh, activities. We are saying that, can we also have financing and loans to support uh, renewable energy? So the issue of financing, we need to harness international financial resources. We also need to harness uh, local financial resources and then leverage together with the support that we get uh, from the fiscals. The other barrier which I must talk to is the lack of awareness mm -hmm. in terms of the capabilities of renewable energy. I think renewable energy has been underrated for a very, very long time. And I think through this program uh, and other initiatives which you are doing mm -hmm. and also which the ministry is doing, we are raising awareness. Uh, the ministry uh, in March 2020 before these lockdowns, uh, just in case, you know, one or two individuals missed it uh, because of what is going on globally, uh, launched the National Renewable Energy Policy, launched the National Biofuels Policy. Mm -hmm. These are very good policies to raise awareness. These are very good policies to motivate and to steer forward the renewable energy sector. So mm -hmm. the launch of the policy shows the commitment of government to accelerate a renewable energy, but also it helps to raise awareness, you know, about the importance of renewable energy. The final challenge I need to talk about is the issue of uh, access to, to technology uh, when it comes to, to renewable energy mm -hmm. uh, itself. Uh, but as a country and also together with our neighbors and other developing countries, we want to see access to technology so that we can also do, you know, south, north to south uh, cooperation mm -hmm. uh, through various programs that will be implemented so that we also get the best practice. Mm -hmm. Do you know that right now in the world we have got what you call, you know, bifacial solar panels which can actually generate, you know, from both sides. Mm -hmm. These are the technologies that we also want to come mm -hmm. on board uh, so that as a country we can be able to move with the rest, but not only that, but to leapfrog is what has already been uh, highlighted. So mm -hmm. technology transfer is one of the things that we are talking about. I want to challenge our research institutions. I want to challenge our academic institutions to also innovate so that we can also produce locally mm -hmm. the equipment that is necessary for, for renewable energy. Mm -hmm. There is no need why we should be importing you know, some of the basic equipment. Mm -hmm. When we've got professors, when we've got gurus, you know, in academia, we may want a local homegrown solutions, mm -hmm. which are relevant. And you will see that once we also do that, um, we will be able to cut operation and maintenance cost. The minister earlier on said that, you know, the, 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 the country is willing to also pay locally for those who are producing locally. Mm -hmm. The... The, 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 the innovation 
or what they would have been done by someone who would have done it uh, externally. Mm -hmm. So this is where we are going, mm -hmm. and those are the barriers that we need to, to be addressing. Mm -hmm. Honorable Minister, from a policy perspective, um, Tawanda obviously highlighting many issues there. Um, the issue of technology as a barrier and you know opportunities that exist towards low-cost technology mm -hmm. and input substitution. To what extent is your ministry you know, engaging with other uh, line ministries um, to come up with one, one goal? Yes, um, the approach of this government to issues of uh, uh, technologies that we actually have got uh, immense capacity to do things locally and we want the best in terms of uh, the necessary technologies. I, d I did allude to the fact earlier on that uh, we are not going to reinvent the wheel and uh, it is not desirable that the country becomes a dumping ground for outdated uh, technologies elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So we are very much uh, focusing on the quality of the technologies that are coming and uh, he has made reference to bifacials for example would mm -hmm. like to go that route but we are not just looking at importation of these uh, technologies mm -hmm. uh, we do have uh, capacity for our own people to produce them mm -hmm. and uh, government will do whatever it takes to assist um, where necessary but there is also a role for us to work with um, uh, development partners and uh, individual investors, uh, countries that uh, would like to render to us technical assistance in, in, in various respects. But we, we can produce a lot of these things locally and uh, our appetite for that has been communicated to the um, in investment world and mm -hmm. we, we think that we can do it. Mm -hmm. Now, the program is uh, Green as Gold, uh, brought to you by uh, ZTN in partnership with uh, Hevo's uh, Tawanda. Uh, the issue of uh, net metering, um, how compatible is it you know, with our current uh, system of prepaid meters? And what are some of the uh, you know, best practices that are emerging from other countries in, in, in Africa, for example, that have taken net metering on board? Thank you very much for that question. Yeah, net metering is very much compatible with our own system here. Uh, it's only that uh, various consumers and various industries are used to a system where they are just consuming. Mm -hmm. So it's just about changing that perception and also then doing some retrofitting in terms of where you had a meter which was, uh, you know, moving current in one direction. It means that uh, there has to be modifications that have to be done. Those modifications should be done <coughs> by people who are qualified, uh, by people who are competent in terms of doing this. Because when we talk of energy and mm -hmm. electricity in particular, we are also talking about public safety. It's not mm -hmm. about anyone you know, just joining this net metering uh, without the system being properly sized, without the system being properly checked to see if it is uh, safe to be able to install that. So there is going to be some retrofitting. But for new installation, we are saying retrofitting for those that already exist. If mm -hmm. it's a company that was in existence many years ago, it was not implementing net metering. Mm -hmm. uh, the Honorable Minister, you know, made reference to companies like um, Schweppes and Zimbabwe Limited, who are now really uh, the pest setters, mm -hmm. you know, having a one megawatt uh, plant, which is the biggest in sub-Saharan Africa, outside South Africa. Mm -hmm. Because they were also at that stage, some retrofitting had to be done. Mm -hmm. In order for us to mm -hmm. save money, we may have to, to do that. But there is no excuse for new industries, for new industries which are being uh, constructed. They have to then to be developed mm -hmm. with that in mind. It's the same thing in terms of geysers. Mm -hmm. We know that geysers are some of the biggest energy consumers in the country, in the mm -hmm. especially in this winter period that mm -hmm, we are getting mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. And what are we saying? We are saying let's retrofit for those who already have uh, uh, built uh, their properties. Mm -hmm. They can retrofit with solar geysers. Mm -hmm. But let's say we've got a new development in Westgate or we've got a new development in Borodev. There's, there's, there's no reason for us not to, not to go that route. Now, is net metering likely to present any challenges with uh, consumptive and productive taxes, in your opinion? I do not think that it will have any challenges. Mm -hmm. It's about uh,
communication, it is about transparency, it is about working uh, together with, uh, with our regulator, which mm -hmm. has been given the mandate uh, by the ministry. I know that um, in every mm -hmm. new approach, there are going to be skeptics. Uh, there are going to be pessimists who will think that this uh, will not work. Mm -hmm. But what I want to assure our viewers is that Zimbabwe is actually now moving in the area of energy and power development. And at the end of the day, we do not want anyone to be left out. Mm -hmm. So that you, when you see others now benefiting, that's where you want to get involved. Mm -hmm. Our time is uh, fast running out. I'll kindly ask uh, gentlemen to give us your, your, your closing uh, contributions. Uh, maybe I'll start with you, um, Atanda, and then I'll give <coughs> the minister a chance to wrap it up. My closing remarks is that uh, net metering is a low-hanging fruit for Zimbabwe in terms of us uh, achieving energy security. It will help us to scale up the adoption of renewable energy. It will help us to address you know, three key issues that uh, we want to achieve. Poverty is a key challenge that affects the world. And um, according to you know, international assessments, a person who is living below a dollar a day is living in extreme poverty. You would rather give someone energy than just give someone a dollar. So when we go towards net metering and renewable energy, we are really empowering people to be able to generate income from energy. But through the renewable energy agenda and uh, also net metering, we can be able to create a green jobs. And finally, we do not want to be judged harshly by our children. We do not want to be judged harshly by the future generations. Mm -hmm. We must green this planet because if we continue with the current patterns of production and consumption, which are based on fossil fuels like coal, we will need two planet Earths by 2050 and it will not be sustainable. So mm -hmm. let us support this initiative. Thank you, Tawanda. Honorable Minister. Yes, uh, we, we do not have a choice. Um, um, uh, we must go green. We have international obligations that we uh, look at uh, very seriously. Tawanda has uh, made reference to SDG 7. So we must do this. Practically, we've been victims of cl climate change. We've seen what has happened at uh, Kariba. We've also seen what has happened uh, with regards to Cyclone Idai. Uh, we are currently in the throes of a drought, mm -hmm. and the uh, government is busy doing everything that is possible to mitigate this. So we must work on it, and we must be uh, committed and determined to make sure that this uh, uh, process moves ahead. Net metering, very important. Uh, solar projects, very important. They must also have uh, an economic foundation. We would like uh, the process to affect um, the new farmer, for example. Mm -hmm. Some of the people on farms have never paid an electricity bill. We would like to have uh, small grids in farms where the farmers are assured of power and they can sell the excess to Zesa who, if they have sufficient power, uh, for example, as is obtaining at the moment, they can export that power. Mm -hmm. That's our, our long-term goal as government. We're not just looking at expanding our deficit, but we also recognize that uh, this is a business for government. Mm -hmm. We should be able to supply power to our neighbors who uh, may not have sufficient power. Mm -hmm. So that is how we, we are viewing this uh, process, and we will do whatever is necessary to incentivize would like technical assistance, would like suggestions from the public, particularly those that are invested already into solar, to say what does it take. We don't want a solo approach to this. We would like to be educated by investors as to what it is that will work for them. Mm -hmm. And they will find uh, us uh, very willing to, to work with them. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, thank you so much. We don't have a choice, uh, according to the minister, we must green this planet. After all, we do owe it to posterity. We are coming to the end of the program, Green as Gold, brought to you by ZTN in partnership with Hivos. Today we were focusing on the concept of net metering. Uh, many thanks to our partner Hivos who made this broadcast possible through their Green and Inclusive Energy Program, GIE, uh, that seeks to stimulate and enable Southern Africa's energy transition towards renewable energy technology. Uh, visit their website, hivos.org, to find out more about their work 
work and also their programs. I'd like to thank my panelists for today, Advocate Fortune Chassi, uh, the Minister of Energy and Power Development, and Mr. Tawanda Muzamwese, Chief Sustainability Consultant with Toxic Console Consultants. Uh, not forgetting our viewers who followed this discussion through our social media platforms. Uh, thank you for your thoughts and comments. Uh, Green as Gold is back on your screens next week. Until then, stay safe. I'm Blessing Manazi. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.